You know how when you go on the internet and you're looking for one thing and you end up buying another? Well, that happened recently, you see. I've got a bit of an obsession with overalls. I like them. They're my main sort of fashion items, so to speak. And I wanted a pair of these American classic uh, Carhartt overalls, the ones with the pouch in the front, the R28. And I was hunting around looking for a company that sold them and uh, ended up finding one. Well, lots of companies sell them, obviously, but it was finding one that would actually ship to the UK. A lot of them don't ship uh, across overseas. And I found one. It was at dungarees.net, just in case MD in the UK wants American overalls. And while I was actually looking for them, I found various reviews. And it pointed out that uh, although they're called carpenter's overalls, they're also really popular with sprinkler fitters and pipe fitters and plumbers and also elevator mechanics because all the pouches they've got on them are great for stuffing all your tools in and, and things like this, sprinkler heads. So uh, now that I, I managed to get diverted onto sprinkler heads, I thought, oh, you know what? Uh, I can remember working alongside the sprinkler guys in building sites. I mean, every building site these days has the sprinklers, you know, sprinkler fitters there because, well, to put things into perspective, roughly 40 million of these are installed every single year. All modern buildings should really have sprinklers. It's, they're just really good at what they do, putting out fires. And um, I remember uh, on a site picking one up that had just been abandoned and it had a lovely blue coloured liquid in it. And I wondered, why are they all different colours? And I started looking online and I thought, oh, eBay. You know, if I go on eBay, surely I'll find people selling old sprinkler heads or something like that. Well, yes. But also, I found that all our favourite Chinese suppliers were also selling sprinkler heads. Including F0 in e-store. So that F0, F0 in e-store, I use them quite a lot. And they're £1.19, £1.29. They're cheap, really cheap. And suddenly you think, you know, that makes it viable to put sprinklers in your own house, you know. I suppose ultimately there are probably regulations regarding, you know, the type of pipe you'd use. But I suppose for a personal workshop installation, uh, you could probably use just standard copper pipe. Because if something gives on in a fire, then, you know, the water's going to deluge anyway. But uh, these things stuck, come with a sort of a half-inch BSP thread. I think they, they also come in other threads. And it turns out there is a colour code to the uh, vials, and it's to do with the temperature they fire at. Uh, a quick look online found Wikipedia had a picture, a very useful picture, a very pretty picture. It looks like the pride flag and explosive liquid capsules. But... Um, I couldn't find this in the actual Wikipedia article itself. This is just a part of their uh, catalogue of pictures. But you'll notice that as the temperature rises, and these ones, uh, we've got the red and we've got the green here, which is the 68 and 93 degrees. And the blue one I'd got is obviously 141. It's ob I wonder if they'd chosen that one because they were had false tri tricking, triggering before... But you'd think 141 degrees Celsius, that's pretty high. But do you notice how the bubble size is different? I thought that it was the liquid expansion rate. But look at the bubble size. The smaller the bubble, the more likely it is to go off at the lower temperature. And the bigger the bubble allows greater liquid expansion, so it will go off at the higher temperature. So the bubble size, I reckon, is determining the actual point that the glass is going to break and allow the plunger to pop out. And the colour is just really an, a, an easy indication for looking at them. And it'll probably just be the same liquid. I'm not sure what the liquid is. Maybe an alcohol? And uh, one of the interesting ones here was this one, where you have a sprinkler, but uh, it's got this uh, drop-down mechanism. And it goes into this cup. And once it's screwed in... Ooh, try not to trap my fingers as I screw it in. A uh, cover goes in the front, and it means it's completely hidden. And I thought, is this just a cosmetic thing? But I suppose if you have this flush to a ceiling, it means that if someone bumps, you know, it's less likely someone's going to hit it with a scaffold or like a pole or something while they're working up there, so it does protect it. And I get the feeling that when the heat, this is heated up by fire, there must be an alloy that just melts, and the cover drops off, and when it does drop off, then that reveals the sprinkler. And this uh, deflector then pops down to allow the water to um, divert out. But also then the heat can travel up and make the capsule in here fail. And that is what triggers it. So let's take a look at how the con these are constructed. 
So there's a grub screw down the end, which was, I've had this one apart, so it's not as tight as it was before. But it had a thread lock on it, and when you undo it, let's say I zoom up, in fact. Let's uh, take a closer look here. So when you undo this grub screw, the little glass file drops out. And the glass file... Um, Oh, and a little plug. Here's the little plug that uh, drops out to let the water out. It is just literally held in by the glass file. And uh, it's got a sort of rubber sealing ring. It's not an O-ring, just it's a flat uh, circular ring. And then the seal here uh, goes into the end like that to hold it in place. And the grub screw is simply tightened up against the end of it. And I guess that's also why the glass is thicker at the end, to actually make it stronger for where it's doing that. Oh, and at that end too. And that actually is what work, makes it work. It holds a, this plunger in with pressure until this glass breaks. And now I'm looking at, looking at this, uh, I notice even these. It looks like it's been done with a capillary tube that's been sort of fused on. And then they filled it with a liquid. I'm not sure how they'd have done that. Do you think they drew a vacuum and then released it to let the liquid go in and then tipped it off? Not sure. How do they control the size of the bubble? There must be a lot of science to that. But then they are mass produced. So um, that's fundamentally it. The grub screw, when it comes out, has the hex head to put it in the first place, the Allen key type head. And then it's just got a very slight dome at the end just to keep that uh, vial centered on it and keep it sort of secure from slipping out because it is under pressure. So I was wondering what happens when you heat this up? So. Um, Let's uh, heat one of them up. So this one should theoretically trip about 6 to 8 degrees Celsius. So let's uh, do that right now. Let's get the heat gun and heat this up and see what happens. I don't know how long it's going to take to heat up. It might not go quickly. Oh, it just splattered everywhere. Yes, and hit me in the face too. So uh, they really do explode when they go. Neat, said Clive. I wonder what that liquid that is just sprayed, it looks like blood splatter, it's very Halloweenish. So uh, yes, the bench is now covered in broken glass and red liquid. This was kind of predictable, wasn't it? And of course now the plunder can pop out. So um, yes, that, I suppose ultimately it's pressurising that gas. What does it smell like? Mm, no obvious smell. Uh, I'm tempted to light it, but I don't think that's a particularly good idea on the bench, and also it's so spread out now, I'm not sure it would actually work. Uh, I don't know what that liquid is, it's probably horribly carcinogenic or something, no my luck. So, um, yeah, sprinklers, they're quite interesting, they're quite neat. Part of me thinks that uh, if you wanted a really manly necklace, you could put a chain on and just have it round your neck as a pendant, with that nice sort of glass orb in the middle of the, the sort of vial. But yeah, they're really super simple, they're absolutely available, so if you did want to put them in your workshop, all you need to do is get the appropriate plumbing components and you could just run them probably off your water main. Um, but uh, the question is, would having this cheapy Chinese one for a couple of quid make it more prone to just failure? I don't think so. Um, because it is a really simple device. Um, and it did take quite a lot of heat to actually make that trigger. Oh, another thing. This one is designed for pointing up the way, because if maybe you want to avoid uh, these sprinklers being bumped by forklift trucks, things like that, you can actually have the pipe goes up the way from the, uh, from the main feed pipe. Ah, uh, it's covered in this liquid. And then when the water sprays up, it actually deflects off that and comes back down again. But the other ones that stick down out the ceiling have it sort of curved down that way, um, and they just spray sort of in a downward pattern. This one, however, seems to have a very, very... It's got a slight downward curve, but it seems almost flat. I wonder why. But the one thing that didn't arrive was a cage. I ordered a cage at the same time, which is uh, just designed to... You fit the sprinkle inside and it's just a cage round to stop it being hit. So that's quite interesting. Now, I did find while I was researching this, I found an Ave video with uh, sp uh, the sprinklers in it. An early Ave video. And uh, he was uh, considering the possibility, how would you stop that being triggered by someone firing a laser at it? And I suppose ultimately this system would actually do that if you had them all recessed in these covers so they only popped off of the heat. Or I suppose you could have a small thermal 
bag. I'm not really sure what would be the best thing that would then just blow off. Some simple cover that would just uh, come off that would basically defeat easy triggering with remote, la you know, pointing lasers at these things. But yeah, interesting stuff.